The rapper Cupcake just opened up about what led to her tweet about possibly taking her own life, but it actually turned into a story about how she left her abusive boyfriend, and there's a lot, a lot that we can learn from this. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. And what I like to do is pull different topics from pop culture to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, just a little bit of a trigger warning. There's gonna be some talk about some sensitive subjects like suicide and all of that, all right? But anyways, for those of you who are not caught up, maybe a week or two ago there was a lot a lot of uproar on the internet and just uh this uproar was out of concern for the rapper cupcake so i actually i i think i heard of her but you know i don't follow her music just not my thing um but anyways she sent out a tweet and i had a lot of people messaging me about it and asked me my thoughts and everything and basically cupcake sent a tweet out and i believe she also posted it on instagram about wanting to take her own life and yeah, everybody on Twitter was freaking out. Um, she's friends with uh, Elijah Daniel, who is another YouTuber. He is also a rapper, rapper. And then also Shane Dawson, who fell in love with her music and used to play it all the time. Um, a lot of people online were very, very concerned about Cupcake and people were freaking out that night. And it took a little bit, but then there was news that they did a wellness check on her and then they actually took her to a hospital. So the first thing I wanna say is like, all of, all of Cupcake's friends, family, support, whoever like got involved in that, exactly, exactly. We saw something uh, similar with Pete Davidson about a month or so ago. For those of you who are concerned about a friend who is possibly suicidal, if you see things like that, like yes, call the cops, have them go do a wellness check, get them into a hospital, all right? One of the biggest mistakes that people make is that they don't do anything about it. They don't do anything. They're like, oh, I don't want them to go to a hospital, I don't want them to go do this. No, they need to go to a hospital and be put on a hold. Typically, the hold is about 48 to 72 hours just to go through a psychiatric evaluation, make sure that they're safe from themselves or possibly hurting other people. So that was perfect, and it was awesome to see all the love and support that Cupcake had, and hopefully now that she's gone through that and overcome it, she really sees the love and support that she has, all right? But anyways, there hasn't been much um, about what's happened since she was released, but... Uh, Tristan, my beautiful girlfriend, just let me know that Cupcake uh, put out a, a, like a note story about what actually happened. Now, I was just doing some research. I'm not entirely sure if this was on Twitter or Instagram. I saw Elijah Daniel, you know, replied to a tweet that I think was deleted, asking her if she would come stay in LA for a while and all of that. Real quick, I just wanna touch on this um, because I mentioned in one of my um, You Netflix review, um, videos like if you have a friend who is suicidal or you know something that's more extreme just remember just remember like not only am i not a licensed professional but you are not a licensed professional like yes it is good to love and support and be there for that person but your love will not cure their depression all right so if anything support them in getting professional help so if they're going to come stay with you or you're going to go stay with them make sure that they're going to therapy or support groups but later in this video i'm going to talk about various resources all right so anyways i'm going to put um a screenshot up of some of her story up here but basically just to kind of summarize the story she talks about what led to that night when she was suicidal and made those tweets it was coming from an abusive relationship with a man that she was dating for about five months and going back and forth to so one of the things that she talked about you know leading up to this was this man stole ten thousand dollars from her while she was sleeping and gave it to another woman but she also talks about how you know she also gave him thirty thousand dollars all right because she knew what it was like to be in that situation and she wanted to help she wanted to do these things and and by the way no fault against cupcake no fault at all against cupcake for this but this is something that i talk about when we talk about like enabling um a great book that i'm reading right now about mental health in the black community is shook ones by charlemagne the god and he talks about how since he got famous how since he started making a lot of money ever since that happened a lot of people are coming to him for money right they want they want help with their their you know rap career or they want help paying their bills or they want him to help them buy a house or whatever and he talks about you know these battles these internal struggles that he goes with like should i do this right and a lot of his answers come from 
asking his therapist or asking trusted people in his support group, okay? Like, this is important. So my son, for example, he got a bunch of money for Christmas, all right? And he plays a ton of Fortnite. He has some friends that he plays Fortnite with. And all of a sudden, my son has money and a lot of people want him to start buying them skins. And I had to sit down and have a talk with him about that. So just remember, you're not always helping people by giving them money. Like my experience with that, when I first got sober, like thank God people didn't give me money. Thank God that people did not give me money and I had to work on this stuff myself. You know what I mean? Because if people had given me money at that time, like especially a lot of money, like I wouldn't have put in the work to get on my own feet and learn how to survive on my own, all right? But anyways, one of the things that we need to talk about is like why people stay in abusive relationships, okay? So Tristan and I just finished the, the series Surviving R. Kelly and Cupcake talks about in this the threats, right? Not only the, the physical abuse that this, this man did, but also the threats against her family. That's something that I noticed in the Surviving R. Kelly series too, like the threats that would happen. Some like emotional, physical abuse, these things are all about power, right? So these dudes who are abusing women, like they are not only threatening the woman, but they're also threatening their family. So this puts women in a very difficult situation, like, well, if I leave this man, is he going to hurt my family, right? So like, this is one of the reasons why women stay in this. And leading to her her talking about, you know, potentially taking her her life, this is something that I talked about in my Illumination series when I talked about learned helplessness, all right? So learned helplessness, this is when a person gets to a point where they, they feel like there's no hope. There's no hope left at all. This is what typically happens um, when people are in abusive relationships. So there's a, a fascinating study from um, that book, Lost Connections, about depression and anxiety that I keep trying to teach you about. When people were interviewed with depression, they found that a lot of people who struggle with depression, they can't picture a future, all right? Like they did this study where people read, um, a, uh, what was it? Is it a Christmas story? It's not the Christmas story. What's the one with Scrooge? El Ebenezer Scrooge. Anybody? Mom, Tristan? What's a Christmas Carol, thank you, Tristan. Tristan's over there doing her makeup, getting ready for the day, looking all lovely and whatnot. But anyways, A Christmas Carol. So what they did in this study was they had, um, they they actually went to like a teenage uh, mental health treatment center and they had these kids read A Christmas Carol, right? And they asked um, one group who was like in there for things like, you know, self-harm or some other behaviors. And then they took people, um, young people who were in there for, you know, suicidal, um, you know, threats or ideation or even attempts, right? And what they found was when they asked them questions about the story of Christmas Carol, and they said like, what do you see Ebenezer Scrooge's future looking like? The kids who were in there for other things, not depression or suicidal thoughts, they were able to kind of talk about where they thought Ebenezer Scrooge would be. The kids who were in there with severe depression and suicidal thoughts, they couldn't imagine a future of Ebenezer Scrooge. So a lot of people who get to that point, they can't see any kind of positive future or even no future at all. There's no light at the end of that tunnel. And this is what often happens for people who are in abusive relationships. So one thing that uh, Cupcake talks about in her story that she released is that she wants young women to start being aware of the signs of abuse. And absolutely, this is why I, I encourage people to learn from other people's stories and to listen and start to recognize these things. Like when I was doing my review on that series, You, like there are things to notice and these red flags to look out for, right? To possibly end that relationship before it's too late. So I'm glad and I'm very grateful for some uh, someone like Cupcake opening up and being so brave to put that story out there. And this is something that I, I think a lot of people should educate themselves on, is looking and seeing what are the signs of abuse? What does abuse look like? Whether it's emotional abuse or whatever it is, look and see what those signs are. Now, here's the thing, abusive relationships are traumatic, all right? This is something that we need to work on. Something that Illy Mation talked about when she sent me that uh, quote to use for my last video about her was like, there's a lot of healing that happens after getting that relationship, right? So this is why you should go through therapy. Go to therapy and talk about these traumas. If not, this is something that is like a heavy weight that is going to weigh on you in all of your future relationships and even your life in general, all right? You need to work through that trauma, all right? As I mentioned, my channel is supported by Better help online therapy if that's an option for you or talk with your insurance provider if you have health insurance use that 
to get therapy, all right? If not, I highly suggest that you look for support groups, even online support groups of abuse survivors and talk to other people. This is very important when it comes to overcoming trauma. But yeah, the last thing that I'll talk about, again, like super proud of Cupcake for opening up and sharing her story. Like one of the things that I was taught is that me sharing my story can help other people, all right? I could take this dark past that I had and, and use it to encourage others, to let people know like, listen, I know you're in it right now, but things can get better, all right? But when I do that, I have to look at other people who have overcome their past and say, what did they do? How can I do that too? And follow in their footsteps, do it the way that they did. Like people have already laid out a blueprint of how to overcome these things. That's why I loved covering Illumation stories because she had a blueprint of how she is, you know, recovering from that traumatic relationship that she was in, all right? But anyways, again, check down below in the description. There are resources. Um, I have down there Rain, which is for survivors of abuse or people trying to get out of abusive relationships. There's also the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. That is for the United States. You can call or you can text them. There's also some resources for therapy as well as a link to our uh, Facebook group as well as our Discord server if you need some more like peer support or you just want to share your story and help others who are trying to overcome their trauma as well, all right? Although the support groups are not filled with licensed professionals, they are other men and women who have been through what you have been through, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And don't forget, last Thursday of the month, we are doing our first ever group call, all right? And if you would like to sign up for Patreon, click or tap right there, okay? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.